one way ANOVA using SPSS. Okay, there's our numbers. We're going to enter those in SPSS. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go to variable view. You're going to name your variables. The first one, you're going to call it group. That is a biggie with ANOVAs. It is a categorical variable. Just call it numeric. Uh, width is how many characters you can put in the name decimals. If you're using decimals, leave that there. If not, I always say put a zero, and then I always make the label the same name as the variable name. Values. We're just going to put one as group one, two as group two. Spell it right there. And three is group three. Okay, and then the second piece of data is the actual score. Same thing, same thing, same thing, decimals, no decimals. Going to make that score. A, a quick trick, if, if you make the labels real long names, they're going to show up in the SPS output, and that it's problematic. And this is not a categorical variable, so they will not have meaning values. Let us call. We have to tell the computer what kind of variables they are. So the first one, group, is a nominal. Second one, score is what SPSS calls scale. Okay, so now we, we are set to go. Let us simply enter the data. Give me a second. All right, so we got four in group one, four in group two, four in group three. So let's set that up first. So we need four ones, four twos, and four threes. Okay, so now let's go back and get the one data. I already forgot what they were. So 12, 8, 7, 5, 12, 8, 7, 5, 12, 8, 7, 5, 12, 8, 7, 5. All right, for the twos, 10, 19, 10, 11, 10, 19, 10, 11, 10, 19, 10, 11, 10, 19, 10, 11. 14, 12, 10, 12, 14, 12, 10, 12, 14, 12, 10, 12. Very important, always double check your entries. Okay, you're going to save it. You got to name it somewhere. This is a one way ANOVA. And you're going to get the output with nothing on it yet, so we really don't need this part. We need to check the three assumptions of a one-way ANOVA. The first one is normality, but right off the bat, if you have a small sample size, which this is very, very small, you're probably going to run into some normality issues, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. We're going to go to Analyze. There are many ways to check for normality. I always prefer Explore. The dependent list is your DV. That's always got to be your continuous variable, your scale variable, score variable. And your factor list is your grouper. Statistics, we always get the descriptives. That's the means and the medians and the modes and the standard deviations. Uh, outliers wouldn't hurt. It tells you what's too far out there. But again, with such a small sample size, it's, it's going to be a mess, I can already tell you. And the plots, we always look at the histogram and do a normality test for each of the group of the DVs. Options, that's nothing. With these little buttons on the side here, I suggest you just click them all because as this class goes on, these these tests are going to get more and more sophisticated and there'll be a lot more options over here. So we're going to click OK. It's going to bring up the output sheet. This tells you how many are in each group, how many we're missing. And there's the description. There's the mean for group one, mean for group two, etc., etc. These are your extreme values. That doesn't mean they're outliers per se. That just means they're either the maximums or the minimums. Test of normality. The kolgomorov schmirnov test, there wasn't enough sample size, so we did not get a figure here, but we can switch over to the Shapiro-Wilk. And 
we could look at group two. It is definitely not normal. Okay, that's what this means. If this significance level is less than 0.05, that means you violated that assumption. So group two, you violated the assumption of normality. The histograms are going to be a mess because, again, there's only four per group. So the histograms are pretty much useless here. Uh, don't need stem and leaf plots. But that's okay. So normality, two of the groups are okay. One of the groups has violated. But we're going to press on. Okay, let's run this ANOVA. There's two ways through SPSS. One is through compare means. So remember, a one-way ANOVA is just a t-test with more than two groups. Okay, so it, it, the t-test is the foundation of the ANOVA. So we go down here to one-way ANOVA. Our dependent variable is always our continuous. That's going to be our scores, our factor. Factor means IV, and it's always a grouping IV in an ANOVA. So click that. Contrast, don't care. Post hoc. Normally, we do the post, the Tukey test. The Tukey test will compare every pairwise comparison to see if the difference between them is significant. So, in other words, it'll look at the difference between group one and two, one and three, two and three, to see which of those differences is big enough. So, this this little little ANOVA, it's not a big deal. But imagine you had fifteen different groups. Okay, so the different two two pair combinations can get into the hundreds, and that's when this becomes very helpful. But but we're going to go ahead and check, click that anyway. And options. Descriptives, again, that's your means and your, and your standard deviations. You always want your fixed and random effects. That's your effect size. Homogeneity variance, that is one of your assumptions. Okay. And Brown Foresight, that's another homogeneity variance test, but we never use that. And a Welch's test, uh, don't use that either. So, and in means plot, you can plot the means of the different groups if you want. Click OK, and we're to the output. So let me see if I can get this on the screen. So here's group one, how many were there, what their means were, what the standard deviation was, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But let's let's cut to the chase here. We're looking at the F statistic. Okay. But this is just the descriptives, okay? So they get your minimum and your max and your confidence intervals of where the mean should be. Um, let's look at the homogeneity variance test. This is the Levine's test. You're going to be using this to death. So if this significance value is less than 0.05, you violate the assumption of homogeneity variance. If you violate that, you can't use the ANOVA, okay? But we're good here. This is not less than 0.05, so we didn't violate anything. And finally, here's the ANOVA test. We see the F calculated F score is 2.4, and the corresponding significance to that is 0.145, which is not less than 0.05. Therefore, you cannot reject the null. So in other words, you did not prove that there was a significant difference between the mean scores of group one, two, or three. So if you do not prove a significant difference between a group, there is no use running a post hoc test, okay? There is no difference between those means. That's what this is saying. All right, we're going to use a different function to run the same ANOVA. We're going to go to general linear model. I suggest you start using this one. Because, again, as, as these tests get more and more sophisticated, they're going to start adding more factors. You better get used to the general linear model. You're going to go to general linear model, univariate. Univariate is the number of DVs. We only have one here. So your DV is going to be your score. Your fixed factor, again, remember, factor, factor means IV. And in ANOVAs, they're all groupers. Don't have any random factors. Don't have any covariates yet. So you again, I suggest you just click all these. The model is already preset. Contrast, that's we're not gonna look at that. Um eh, don't care about that. Post hoc test, again, you would click this over. In order to run a, a Tukey test, you need at least three groups. Okay, so if you don't have at least three groups, th these Tukey tests will be grayed out. But let's click that anyway. And save. There's always weird stuff in there. Let's not look at that. Options. Okay, for options, I always click overall. It's good to get the descriptives, effect size, power, homogeneity variance test. Click continue. You should be good to go. So here's the, sec here's the general linear model output. 
it should be identical to the other one. So there's how many per group. There's your means and standard deviation. There's your Levine's test. Again, you did not violate the assumption of homogeneity of variance. And here's your actual F. 2.4, not quite big enough to get you significance of less than 0.05. Um, but very important, your partial out of squared, that's your effect size. So whenever you run an ANOVA, you always look at three different things. Is there a significant difference first? Okay, significant first. Number two, what was the effect size? The effect size is how much of the variance in the DV you can explain by what you're doing. So you, you kind of want a large effect size. This is actually a large effect size, but it really doesn't matter because you don't have a significant difference. And the last thing you look at is your power. Okay, you always want your power to be up to one. And our power, you always look at the either the group or the corrected model. The group sign right here, that's this one. This is a very, very small power, which basically means your sample size wasn't large enough, which we kind of knew going into it. So in other words, no significant difference, power was bad, so, so this would not be a very believable test. But that's how you run an ANOVA in SPSS. MGZ, out.